or in listen only mode. Hello and welcome to our webinar. We thank you for joining us this afternoon. But before we dive in, I'd like to explain a few things about the webinar platform. And this is to allow you as an attendee to get the most out of uh, the webinar. You'll be in listen only mode, but to engage with us, you can uh, use the on-screen panel and you can use a question um, tab or the chat tab to pose any, uh, any of your questions. Um, we hope we will be able to answer all your questions uh, in this webinar and if not we will be providing you with a, an FAQ um, and a recording of these slides uh, without will be sent to you. So I'd just like to go through the agenda um, with you today. We're going to be uh, welcoming you, uh, oh, I've just welcomed you, but there'll be other few people welcoming you today. Um, we're going to, uh, Anne Harris, Sorry. manager. Hello. Sorry, Sarah, wrapped. Um, we can't see your screen. Are you going to share your screen to the slides? Can you... That's it. Perfect. Thank you. No, sorry. That's it. Okay. So, the agenda, we're going to welcome you. I've already welcomed you, but you will have a few other people welcoming you today. Uh, and Harrod, the business manager for Wales, will be giving you an update. Uh, Emma McKay, our industry manager, she will be giving you an update too. Um, Emma will be going through our uh, COVID uh, CPD. From then on, I will um, go through the our qualification. A couple of guest speakers for you um, today. Um, the first guest speaker will be Simone Hawking from ISA Trainer, uh, ISA Training, and. Uh, Simone's going to be talking to Frank about his long career, and I will interview, uh, introduce them later. And we have another guest speaker from the AHT, David Bassett, and I'm hoping he can get on this um, this webinar. If he can't, I will I will go through his slides, um, and then we'll be going through all the support that we have to offer you um, moving forward. So I'd like to introduce Emma McKay, like I said, this is Emma, our industry manager, and her details are here. This is my new business manager for Wales uh, and Harrod, and her details are there. Ooh. So, in Wales... I'm going to go to Amster. Um, and has been on a moment, get a public in land, but she never did any for Rogi Roy Hamster land in so good afternoon and thank you very much for joining us. We really do appreciate you um, taking up your time to join us on this webinar today. So thank you. Just a brief update from me, uh, just a general update about Wales. Um, some of the queries I've been coming in, hopefully I can answer some of your questions right now. With regards to QIW, um, we were hoping to have blanket extensions on the hair and beauty qualifications up until um, the end of 2023. Unfortunately, this hasn't happened due to different reasons, due, and mainly due to COVID and staffing restrictions. But we are working on the extensions. If they're any due to finish in December, we are working on them to get them extended for another year. If you have got any particular queries, I know I've got, I've got a few that I have been sending on, um, then please <clears throat> do let me know. Um, with regards to our website, we are currently updating our website. Um, I'm working with some of my colleagues on this to have a Wales landing page. And on this um, website, then you'll be able to see um, how to how to um, let us know if you have got any issues with QIW queries, if you want an extension or if you want a new qualification approved for QIW, then there will be clear guidance for you on the website. As soon as I have this information to hand, I will forward it on to you. With regards to webinars, we are, uh, this is our first webinar for Hair and Beauty in Wales, and we will be holding more. We're hoping to hold one every quarter, and that's not just for Hair and Beauty, but it will be for each sector as well, because I know some of you work within different sectors, um, and we are look, looking to put dates in the diary before Christmas for the other sectors as well. For the Welsh language, some of you will have received our Welsh language catalogue. Um, I know Colleges Wales and NTFW have received them and they have been sending them out to their contacts. 
we have got with Heron Beauty, we have got the 6008 and the certificates and diploma in hairdressing Barbara. We have got parts of that translated in, in through the medium of Welsh, but we have been success, successful in having a QW bilingual grant um, for £35,000 this year, which includes employability skills and the TATA qualification. So if you have got any issues or any queries that you want to see more hair and beauty uh, qualifications translated, then please get in touch with myself and we can apply for it in the grant then next year. And that's all from me. So if you have got any queries, you've, you've all got my contact details and you can contact me direct. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Anne Howard. Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce you to um, Emma McKay, our Industry Manager of Hair and Beauty at Retail and Creative. Thanks, Sarah. Um, this one's the same slide, Sarah. Would you like to move that stuff, lady? Move forward. Okay, so hi, everyone. Is my sound okay, Sarah? Super. Brilliant. Okay, thank you ever so much. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Emma Mackay, and I'm the industry manager here at City and Guilds. So I look after all that is hair, beauty, retail, and creative. Um, just a couple of update slides from me, really. I know that Anne Harrod has already covered some of the work that we are doing moving forward around the extensions. Um, we've spent a great deal of time and energy over the last few months throughout COVID working with our fellow awarding organisations around assessment mitigation. So in Wales, um, much like in England, we have a high proportion of customers who are still using NVQ and VLQ products. So what we've been doing is working with a professional association such as the National Hair and Beauty Federation and HABIA to look at how we can reward achievement throughout this period of crisis. By all means, it has not been about, you know, certificating all of sundry, so everyone who started qualifications, very much about how can we think outside the box to reward achievement where it's already been undertaken and or look at the different restrictions that are coming through from our governments, looking at how we can um, possibly carry out face-to-face -face adaptations, how we can do different types of virtual assessment and, and different ways of collecting information really to meet that assessment um, strategy. So what this has entailed is endless and endless meetings, as you can imagine, virtual meetings. Both myself and Sarah are still working at home. We both have periods of furlough, so as again Anne Harris was saying, we are working through extensions and, and lots of other pieces of work, um, but there are obviously a number of barriers that we have come across, so please bear with us, this work is underway. But as I said, we do spend weekly meetings with professional associations looking at how we can best support the industry, both um, in terms of treatment services, um, rewarding achievement and recognising achievements so far, but also what we can do to support you all moving forward throughout the next academic year. OK, do you want to go to the next slide, Sarah? Sarah? I've gone, it's got it on. Thank you. Yeah, move. Thank you. So we um, would like just to be asked about, you know, who helps to write these qualifications, to be able to put our qualifications into the market, who and how do we help encourage people into the hair and beauty industries? So as you will be aware, I'm sure we have industry advisory board web pages on our website. You can find these by looking under the qualifications section on the City and Guilds website, under hair and in turn under beauty and complementary therapies as well. You will be able to see there's an introduction there telling you what our industry advisory boards are and some great information around who comprises these boards. We find these are years to help to inspire, help them look at different career journeys, different career paths that these people joining the industry um, could possibly undertake. So I've given you some examples on the screen there for hairless and barbering, but we have the same for beauty. They are ever changing as people update their photographs, their biographies. We introduce new board members. Um, so please do take a look if you would like any further information about any of them, how they contribute to the um, reviewing or the building of qualifications for seniors, please do let us know. 
Okay, the next slide. Back. <laughs> it's still on the um, web pages slide. No, it's the. Uh, it's there. It's there. So okay. Have we got it? Okay. No, it's not showing. But I'll talk you through the next part. There we go. There we go. It's there. <laughs> so the I think we've got a bit of a slow system today, so haven't we? Um, I think it's the end of the day, and whoever that is managing and owning work, go to webinar <laughs> is uh, having a slow moment. Um, so the next thing that I would like to tell you about is something again that we were asked again and again throughout this period of crisis, throughout, throughout the COVID-19 situation, is how the teen girls are helping to support people working in industry, people wanting to join the industry with regard to CPD and how they can try and enhance their own skill and or knowledge of how to return safely to the workplace. So what we did is we put together um, a programme. So we've put, built and put together for you a free City and Guilds COVID-19 course. Now at the moment, or up until the beginning of this week, the course was hosted on our website. So we're in the process of transitioning and moving slightly the platform. So please do bear with us for a couple of days whilst we work out where we can host this. Now, the reason we're having to move it is because purely due to volume of people using it. So what we managed to develop was something actually that doesn't need to be used just by people in the hair and beauty industry. But actually, absolutely anybody in any industry, whether you're a student, an apprentice, an employer, a college tutor, somebody working in HR, in absolutely any industry. So as I say, it's a free online course. There's four units or modules for you to observe, to take a look at some information, read through some text, have a look at some images. And then with each module, there's some um, question and answers that you need to complete. Once you are complete and you've achieved the successful completion rate, you will be able to download um, a certificate of completion that's presented and um, available to you as a PDF. But you'll also be emailed a certificate, sorry, a um, digital credential which can be used and shared on all social media platforms. And also um, you can add this onto your email footer. So it's free, it's quick, it's easy to use, can be used by literally everybody and anybody as part of your CPD, um, all about how to return to the workplace safely. And that's about it for me. I mean, we've got lots and lots of work moving forward as you can absolutely imagine. Sarah's gonna to touch, I'm sure, in the next few slides on what we're doing moving forward, the work and the, the, the things that we're doing across the industry areas um, to work to support you all in every country that we operate in with this crisis situation with particular reference to the hair and beauty industry. So good luck. Um, please do reach out to us if you need to, if we can do anything at all we can to support you. We're only an email or a phone call away, Sarah, aren't we? And we hope to see you we soon. Are, we in are. The flesh. We, we hope to do a road trip soon. Yes, absolutely. Thank, Thank you, Sarah. Thanks, Emma. Well, I've introduced myself, but I'm Sarah Fiona, I'm your technical advisor, and I'm going to give you um, a little bit of a qualification update um, today and, um, see what you, and just show you what's changed and what will be changing. So if you can see from this first slide, you know, our portfolio is solely focused on helping people into a job, on the job and into the next job. <coughs> when we are, um, you know, working with you um, in, in Wales, you know, we're always seeing what qualifications you need, um, what what can help you, you know, what qualifications. And as Anna Harris said, you know, you need letters of support from employers and providers. So what we've done with our, um, with our rules of combination, complex numbers, and it's just a screenshot this, but if you see at the bottom, it says rules of combination. If you hit that, too. but you can see here, um, people or English providers, they're going, what is QIW? Do we need to know something? And it's, it's Welsh, you don't need to know that. So we've put that in for you, so that's quite easy for you to then see what you, what is available for you without going on to uh, QW. Um, and then obviously, when if you see something you fancy in there, then you can also speak to your business manager moving forward. Um, and try and raise them to a technical um, and if you look at the technical qualifications you know there's especially for hairdressing you know you can do it over a two-year period and what I'll 
or a three year period. And what I want to remind people is on the technical qualifications, the, with the, um, especially with the hair and beauty at level two, a hair, somebody could come in and just do a cutting and styling qualification one year and then do a colouring qualification the year after. And the year after that, they could do nails or got wants to go into, go into makeup artistry. And they would have three level twos. And that isn't a bad thing. That learner can still, you could, that you're funded for that. And that learner can, is, that is highly employable with three. You need to be creative sometimes when you're looking at delivering your, or planning your curriculum and how you can sort of, um, sort of raise the bar for your learners. The approach um, that we have to take with the technical qualifications, you I do have to make everybody aware of this because it's very, very important. So as part of the uh, of our fitting girls' response to uh, this disruption caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, we're offering our autumn assessment window. We're offering an autumn assessment window for our technical qualifications. And this is to include exams, synoptic, synoptic assessments, and any other centre assessed component maybe some optional units. So the autumn assessment series is only available for students who were due to sit assessments um, this summer, 2020, and either have received a centre assessment grade, which we call a CAG result, that they were not satisfied with, or they didn't like the outcome, or didn't receive the CAG result due to their being insufficient it's not a, an additional assessment, so I want to stress on that. This is not an additional assessment series for students enrolling for spring summer 2021 assessment. It's important that we uh, understand that. And the synoptic assignments and other centre assessed components, you know, the closing date for rebooking leave for eligible students um, was the 11th of September. Now, I know that booking window is still open. But I know they will close that window soon. And once they close that window, you will incur a, um, a late booking fee. So while that's open, try and make sure you get your, you know, your learners booked onto any of the components that they need to be able to um, to go through the, uh, the synoptic and their um, exams. So again, students will complete, they've got to have uh, completed in the year of 1920, that's really important. As censors, you know, you will submit marks, submit marks and grades for all students in the autumn assessment window, along with all the evidence for a sample of students in synoptic assignments using the moderation portal by the 6th of November. Now, these dates are all in the welcome pack, and I'm going to go into that in a minute. So it's really important that if you're doing technicals, go on to our, our website under technicals and you will go on to resources and you'll see the welcome pack there and that gives you all the key dates that you will need moving forward and also they say refer to the marking and moderation guide um for submission requirements and that is a handy booklet to have we have examples in the auto of the autumn assessment series within those guides so like i said i'm going to say this again please note it's not an additional assessment series for students enrolling or enrolled for spring and summer next year, it is for 1920. So if we move on to the mitigation um, approaches uh, and the timeline and date, which we have to look at for our MVQs and VRQs. So again, your centre of intention form um, for technicals um, or VRQs or MVQ should have been uh, sent to our adaption quality team by the 31st of July. And you will be claiming for your adaptions um, around the 30th of um, September. So from June onwards, you you may or may not uh, receive a remote quality assurance activity from your EQA. There is one... Um, document that's really important it's a quality assurance document on the website and you, you can find it at the link here all guidance and support documents can be found there and it's really important that you get onto those and you read them because they're being updated constant, uh, constantly um as we get information through from um you know off court other awarding organizations you know stakeholders trailblazers you name it i fate 
we put all our information up there. So please make sure you, know, you literally are looking at our website to be able to help you move forward. So the landscape here. Well, as Emma said, you know, earlier, our summer has been just mitigation, mitigation, mitigation. And now um, our club, a task force, a task force working group moving forward for 2021. And the meetings held um, with the pro-life fate steering group, um, or one organisation, not really, with sitting girls working together, collaborating. And um, at this moment in time, uh, you know, we're still meeting, there'll be a meeting on Thursday, but we have no news at this moment in time to tell you only that there are plans to put some form of mitigation in for next year, in case the worst case scenario, so it could be down on to local lockdown, um, so where you're working with you know, flexibilities around different you know, areas. Um, as I say, sitting girls working with other awarding organisations to try and you know, to make as minimal changes as possible with a, a super sufficient, um, super efficient um, system, if we can. And that's really important moving forward. Uh, I want to bring your attention to the technical uh, qualifications again here on this page moving forward. The, uh, the extension of the window for completion of submission of evidence before the synoptic assignment. Now that has uh, have mo have moved on. This is our contingency. This is where we're, we're moving to. So this enables the centre you, yourself to be able to plan effectively and deliver the synoptic assignments in 2021. Now, the window for submission of the assessment has been extended and staggered to level three, which is absolutely brilliant for technicals and helping you again to make sure that you've got enough time to actually, you know, moderate, mark and moderate all those learners throughout the academic year. And we're taking into consideration that, um, obviously, in particular, you know, if social distancing becomes a problem or it continues, um, or we, you know, we have certain. Um, the subject of national lockdowns, like I said, we, or we need to accommodate smaller groups. You know, I, I just had a great uh, email today. It's not a great email, actually. I've just got this email where um, a, a tutor said, you know, I've tried to deliver back massage in all the PPE gear with a visor on and a mask and the glasses, and I, I can't breathe. It's been a horrendous lesson. And, you know, and, and this is it, where we're going. So please keep in touch with us because we will be making sure that we uh, keep you updated with absolutely everything. As you can see here, we, ha we, we are opening the uh, synoptic window um, earlier. So the, it'll open one month earlier than this year. It'll open on the 4th of January. So that's one month earlier for you to with your planning. Um, so we're happy about that. The level three closes uh, two weeks later than this year. So again, you've got two weeks longer, four weeks earlier, two weeks longer. So that's six weeks to be able to you know, plan longer um, and work out your bubbles or your social bubbles just in case. Um, and with your level two, that closes the 11th of June, and that's four weeks after the level after um, later than this year, which gives you so much more time to get your degrees done and um, and then be able to just concentrate on on wrapping up. And we have a on this um, exam series here on the bottom there tells you all the exam series. Uh, for the synoptics there. I've also got a little logo on here and that's got a hyperlink to um, a lovely little document talking about the exam series and the results and when you will get those moving forward next year. Ooh. Now I'm just going to touch on um, traineeships in Wales and I, I don't really know an awful lot about the funded in Wales so that's something that your business manager and Harrod We'll pick up um, after this webinar um, if you are um, if you want to discuss it with her. But but we now know that the government are, are ploughing quite a lot of money. I think it's something like thirty three million is it into traineeships. Um, and you know we've got to think about where do our young learners fit in here. So traineeships are designed to um, ensure all trainees get substantial training um, experience, if you like, and it gives employers and providers flexibility to make programs and that which fits the needs to each individual so it's all about that what we do is you know into a job onto the job and onto the next job so traineeships could be used in a way of, uh, of, of bridging the gap 
between a, a learner going to a full-time education um, on a full-time program or into maybe an apprenticeship um, if they so choose. And if we look at the benefits of that, well, the employer gets to know the trainee or um, trainee prior to um, the, maybe taking on an apprenticeship. It's a low cost impact for the employer um, as it doesn't cost anything for a, a traineeship. But we find that the best traineeships work when the employer pays maybe for their lunch and um, their transport there um, and help them, you know, with those sorts of things. It also prepares the um, the trainee the trainee for skills in that sector that they may choose to head into in the future, or may choose to you know move into another sector that would be transferable. And as it says, it's it's flexible. Um, it, they can be anything between six um, and six months and, and three months and six months. Um, but now it's extended to twelve months, which is brilliant. Um, again areas you know devolved governments others going on you know we all say we have a social responsibility to meet um targets in our area helping the young people of and the young people or people who just found themselves out of a job due to the covid19 pandemic so i think the biggest thing on this it gives people confidence again and it helps in the skills to transfer into any any other um they may choose so moving on, there is a link here to our website, which will give you all the information you need on their uh, training. There's some webinars on there um, to support you on the way. Now, I would like to introduce you to, well, I would like to introduce, um, um, well, I would like to launch, that's all, if, if that's the word. Um, the Welsh FE Provider Forum. Um, what does that mean, you're all saying? That's a bit strange, what's that? Well, during lockdown and uh, with COVID, and um, we have our Northern Ireland friends, I was able to uh, touch base with um, somebody from Belfast Met, Tanya Heslip, who organised the curriculum um, and hound to therapists to get together uh, once a fortnight on a Thursday morning for an hour and a half I would pop in for half an hour and they would carry on with their meetings. And you know what? It kept that, that whole um, team or those colleges and the professional leaders say nothing, which is a good thing. It really, really helps. And then I have this idea, you know, if, if I could help Northern Ireland like that, I could do that in England, I could do that in Wales and Scotland. So the idea came up that um, I would then, one of my objectives for this year would be to um, set up um, a Welsh FE for a forum, provide a forum, and, and find chairs. And I would like to introduce you to the chairperson for the Wales FE Forum. Um, she is Simone Hawkins from ISA Training, and there's a lovely picture of Simone. And Simone's got a wealth of, uh, wealth of knowledge, over 15 years employed in the hair and beauty industry with the uh, ISA Training, which is part of Educate, uh, the Educate Group. I think he's currently the uh, qualifications manager She's also a lead endpoint assessor for City and Guilds, and she's also an ambassador for My Organics, an absolutely fantastic product from um, from the group. So I, um, when I asked them, Simone to join me on this journey, um, she was very, very happy to do that because, as you all know, ISA Training um, used to sponsor the Savan Cumrio Awards, and um, Simone was very prominent in that, and that's where we first met quite a few years ago, and. Uh, I missed last year travelling to um, Wales, to Cardiff, to go and spend the night and give awards out and enjoy uh, enjoy uh, giving awards out and actually the party as well afterwards. So I uh, decided to, um, as uh, Simone wanted to build on with competitions and, you know, she wanted to connect more with um, with colleges and, and, you know, just put Wales on the map, which we need to do. You've got some fantastic hairdressers and beauty therapists in Wales. And you'll see some things in a bit, a bit later. So really, it was a suggestion to see how many of you would want to join us. Would you want to meet up once a month? Would you, um, you know, what days are best for you? What times are best for you? And after this, I'll be sending you out the, 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 the you know, the link to the webinar from YouTube and, and an email thanking you. And, you know, if you can reply back to me, if you'd like to join us, then we can put you into a Teams meeting and we can decide on a date where it would be really good to have our first um, Welsh 
um, Epi provider forum. And with England, I've done it in England already, and our first one is next Monday. Um, and it's absolutely, it's been, a, you know, I'm really, really pleased because everybody's getting a voice. And, and that's what it's all about. And we need your intelligence. What's working? What's not working? What, what can we do? How can we make your life better? You know, I'm not saying I work at Hogwarts and I've got a, you know, a magic wand. But what can we do? And if we, if we can get an active group together, you know, bringing the nations together, you know, you know, to England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, then you know, I feel, I feel very, very happy. Um, I'm going to hand over to um, Simone on this slide because she's going to introduce um, a gentleman um, from her past and I'm not going to say any more than that but his, um, his name's Frank so without further ado I will hand you over to Simone and she will be talking to you and Frank will too. Thanks Simone. Thank you Sarah so thank you Sarah and the team at City and Guilds for inviting me. Um, so my name is Simone Horgan <clears throat> and I am the Qualifications Manager at ISA Training as part of the Educate Group. ISA Training specialises in delivering apprenticeships across the hair and beauty um, across Wales. And the purpose of my small part today is to reignite and encourage all of the employers, the training providers and stakeholders in competition work across Wales. Um, I believe in competition work can inspire learners to express their talent, their creative, creativity and opportunity to showcase these skills to peers, colleagues and others. It gives learners great opportunities to be able to not only express their talent but to learn, continual learning in skills that are not always practiced within the salon. Um, I believe that we have great talent across Wales, um, especially in the hair and beauty sector and it's our duty as an employer or training provider to open these doors of opportunities to our learners. So I was never a world champion, however I got to work alongside one. Um, I learned the art of directional setting the real art of directional setting, where a slight mark from the roller would cause you to lose points. I learned the art in creating shapes within men's hair with just a Denman brush. I got to travel, to network, to learn and to meet some really exciting people. Now I'm able to pass this knowledge on to others. Learners are so much more talented than I was and maybe probably haven't got the same opportunities within the competition work. So I've invited Frank Shipton today he was able to take great opportunity out of the competition world. So I'd like to introduce Frank Shipton, and I have prepared a few questions for him to engage on what competition like life was like for him. So hi, Frank. Hello, Thank Simone. you very much for joining us. It's Thank you. So, are you OK if I just carry on with your interview questions? Yes, yeah, certainly. I just, just would make, like to make a comment. But the previous um, speaker was saying about putting whales on the map. Um, competition yeah. wise I'd just like to say um, we've had more uh, gold medalists and silver medalists for world and European championships from Wales than from any other of the four nations. I totally agree Frank. Yes. Brilliant. You have. I totally agree. Thank you. Brilliant and, and we need to encourage the learners to then bring us some more. <laughs> of course, of course. Sorry to interrupt anyway. No, no, that's no problem. So just the first question is how did you get into the competition work? Well, I, was in, I, I, I did my initial hairdressing training at, at a college in Pontypridd in South Wales. And we had a, a college competition, which was fine. Um, and I never thought any more about it until I, I, my third employer, while I was a, 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 an improver, uh, was, uh, had won the um, L'Oreal Colour Trophy heat in, in Cardiff. And um, my first year, that I was working with him, I managed to beat him at the Lauren Colour Trophy Heat in Cardiff. And I got the bug from there because uh, we, we went to the, to the Albert Hall for the finals and to see after the competitions and uh, they would have demonstrations and see all these superstars coming down to the, the centre of the Albert Hall uh, to do their demonstration. And I thought, I want to be part of that. And that's how I, I got the bug. Mm -hmm. And what, what was your biggest achievement within competitions? Uh, well, at European uh, Championships, I got a gold medal and I got a silver medal at the World Championships in Dusseldorf. But I, I think um, um, my greatest uh, achievement actually was passing all the knowledge that I'd gained free of charge from my trainers and passing on to 
to teams that I managed and trained, uh, be it the juniors and the seniors in um, uh, Berlin and uh, Seoul in Korea. And it is, that, is, that is a nice achievement, especially to pass down that knowledge to other learners to give them the opportunities. And I think that's where we stand here. And that's what we should be doing is opening the doors for opportunities for our learners. Oh, sure, um, yeah, sure. What are the skills required to em enter competitions? Because I think sometimes it may be um, disillusioned for, for what competitions are and how, how it differs from the salon. So from your perspective, what skills would you need to enter? Well, um, let me say my, my wife uh, was a competition worker as well um and she and i are totally different whereas i had to be patient and learn gradually um, she has more artistic ability so a mixture of the two uh, ability to be patient and to learn and to manage to go over and over again and practice uh with um, a bit of artistic uh, skill uh i think that's probably the best combination i agree how do these um, skills from competitions differ from the salon? Um, not a great deal, actually, because uh, you had you had to work all the way around. Bear in mind, I was I was a ladies' hairdresser, uh, unlike your former employers who were men's hairdressers. Um, it, it made it it made you appreciate shape and balance, and. Um, the individual skills. The, the, the former speaker was talking about um, putting rollers in um, uh, and using special rollers any, or any, anything that would create a shape that you wanted. Uh, it made you think, it made you have to, to plan out a hairstyle, to think about the face shape, the height of the client, um, everything was in proportion. So this all came from competition work, but it applies to salon work. And that leads me on to the next question is, do you think these skills enhance your salon work? So if learners were to enter competition, do you think in your profession that it enhanced when you got back to your to the salon? Oh, definitely, definitely. First of all, um, because in competitions you have to work to a time limit. And in, in my particular uh, day when I was competing, you have to do a, have to do a seven minute day style brush out. So you really had to work out work quickly. So it a it speeded up your work in the salon. B but um, it every bit of practice made you a better hairdresser, whether it's for the competition or for your client. So that, you know competitions certainly helped you with your salon work. I agree. Um, what opportunities did you receive um, through the competition work? Opportunities. Well. Um, Working for manufacturers, um, for other hairdressing organisations, did um, a few tours for the National Hairdressers Federation. I I got on to doing work with L'Oreal, um, Goldwell, Revlon, um, and Mood. Uh, so we've you know because of that you you get a bit of a reputation within the hairdressing world. So consequently, you get uh, employed by uh, cosmetic manufacturers. So it opens it opens many doors or, or oh, other doors, yeah. Um, and would you encourage competitions for learners? Oh, definitely. Oh, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> it gives, yeah. um, when we had our, our salons in Bristol, um, it would give it, we got all our staff to compete, um, not whether they wanted to or not. There, there were some that were too scared to do it, but once they they saw other staff members of staff their peers of the same age group uh, achieve something they wanted to be part of it so it built up a great camaraderie and um uh, a work ethic yes I, I agree but um thank thank you frank and thank you for um giving giving up your time today to for me to ask you those questions it's my um, pleasure. and thank Good you pleasure. sarah Thank you. And thank you, Sarah and the team for inviting us both. Um, and I do hope there is um, there is opportunity to push this committee forward and, and have the competition work as an agenda item. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Simone. And uh, I really do appreciate um, your time and dedication to wanting to make this Wales forum work. And Frank, thank you so much for your inspiration.
Um, it's My pleasure. From you. Um, so, guys, everybody on now, if you want to join us, please, you know, when I when I send you the thank you email later on, if you can, you know, put your hand up, say you want to join us, and we can get some space and times that are suitable for everybody. Now, without further ado, I'm going to move on to um, our next subject, and uh, I would like to introduce you to a guest speaker here uh, from the AHT, uh, David Bassett. He's a, a hairdressing president of the FHT. So David is, uh, I've worked with him for a long time. He's Welsh. Um, I've worked with him for a long time with the AHT. He's a brilliant judge. What he can't do with the blocking hair, I don't know. Um, I would like to hand over to, to uh, the gorgeous David Bassett from the AHT. David. Hello, everybody. I hope you can hear me all right. Can you? Yeah, that's stupid, Alan. Thank you. Excellent. Right. Um, when you say about what I can do with a block, there was nothing seedy about that, obviously. It's yeah. all quite <laughs> I've done some great CPD with you. <laughs> right. Um, well, first of all, let me tell you a little bit about the AHT. It's the Association of Hairdressing and Beauty Therapists, and it was founded in 1963. Now, obviously, we, we've got these uh, PowerPoints have come up, but I, I don't particularly want to follow the PowerPoints. I would rather you rather tell you or find out what interest there is from colleges and training centres in the AHT itself. Uh, we've worked over the years to try and bring together good practice and also to give out um, information, uh, especially at this time with this the COVID uh, virus problems. Uh, there's a site where we're giving information daily on any up skills of or any upskilled knowledge of what is happening throughout the country and we're also doing it throughout wales scotland and ireland the the nh so the aht actually cover the whole of the united kingdom so we have areas in england wales scotland and northern ireland and the competitions that we run each year going into the competitions um, and we do think these are important because my attitude, and I always tell students this, the industries that you're in, you're going to be in competition for the rest of your life. You know, you're always going to be trying to be better than the salon down the road or better than the person working next to you because you want the clients. And so I think the competition is a very important part of it. And I know that a lot of people like City and Gills, etc like to see the competitions done because it means that you're advancing the students capabilities you're making them slightly more creative you know you're making these students more so sort of determined to succeed in their careers the areas that we've got are actually scotland northeast of england northwest of england midlands wales southern areas and northern ireland um, last year we actually had um, a college from Western Supermare that came into Wales so that they could be part of the competitions. And this year they've they've offered to host the Welsh and West area. Uh, we are hoping to make the West area big enough by itself that we can actually extend and open up a new West area because I'm afraid that died on us about 10 years ago. So we're hoping that that's going to be reinstituted so that we can have two more areas within the within the AHT. Uh, the competitions themselves, various competitions throughout. It starts with first year blow dries for day styles. We do evenings, we do team bridal. There's a creative team look at the end this year, which is all about setting up and modeling practice. Uh, and the difference this year, of course, is that because of the viruses and things that are going around and how things have been delayed through colleges, uh, we've moved our finals back by two months. So instead of having our finals in March, we're actually having them in May this year. And so they'll be on Sunday, the 23rd of May at the Norbeck Hotel in Blackpool. The heats will be from March onwards running up and each area has a heat. And then depending on the numbers of entries, the minimum of three students will go through to the finals from each competition and the maximum for up to 10, depending on the number of people that have entered at the heats. You pay to enter the heats, 
And then the final competitions, you're invited along free of charge to take part in those competitions. Now, I do know, of course, that there is expense in taking the students up to Blackpool for the finals. Um, but I am at the moment working with the Welsh Assembly to see if they will help to fund uh, some of the Welsh contestants going to Blackpool. Um, because I think at the end of the day, we need to promote Wales as much as possible. I know that they support the Welsh skills and that they have supported world skills in the past. And so I would like to see that perhaps the HC could get support as well to encourage our students and to help them to go through to the finals. What do we offer you? Well, in the Welsh area, um, if you become a member of the AHT, um, I think it's £25 this year for a membership. For one member from each college, we will give you a morning's uh, training. So it tends to be a three hour session where we would come into the college, we will talk to the students about competition work in general and what our competitions are about, and then we would do some demonstration skills for them. If you enter two members, which is a £50 fee, we will then come in and spend the whole day with you. And we would do the same thing in the morning, but then in the afternoon, we would do workshops with the students who were interested so that they can actually practice their skills and get some hints and tips from us as to how we think they could improve their, their creative ability. Uh, this is going to be something that's just in Wales. We're not doing it anywhere else, but it's something that I think the, the Welsh area should have. And I'd like to encourage more Welsh memberships simply because I think there is a lot of talent. Uh, talent in Wales and as you said with the world skills I know that four of the finalists last year in the uh, world skills competitions were from Wales so I think it's been a brilliant brilliant uh, accreditation to, to the Welsh um, as I said the, the competitions are held uh, in each area and then it goes on to a national competition where they become the overall champions now, if you are interested in becoming part of the HT, and it's not just open to colleges, it's open to any training centers. So it could be ISA, it could be any of the training centers that work within the hairdressing and beauty industries. If you are registered with a qualification um, like City and Gills or VTCC, VTCT, then you can enter our competitions. Uh, and to enter the competitions, I can send you all the information along with the AHT with this PowerPoint points so you can learn more about us and you can send it to my address, my email address, which is D J Bassett, which is B A S E T at hotmail.com. And I will get that information out to you. David. Um, Thank you for that. Um, you put your email there because I hadn't asked your permission. So thank you for that. I will put it on these slides. Is that all right? Thank you very much. Okay. Thank um, you so much. Okay. Thank you very much, Sarah. So if anybody would like to get involved with the AHT, I will put David's email address on here. Um, again, if you wanting to get involved with the forum, brilliant. We can get this big network going and. Uh, as you can see, there's an awful lot to offer uh, out there and, and keep this uh, this uh, industry alive and inspirational. Now, I just wanted to show you this because this picture because we did that. We, we launched our digital bar barbering competition we before lockdown. Anyway, it's a digital barbering competition, so it could go ahead. And there we go. These are the winners. And you can see you've got your Welsh winner there um, for 2020. And these guys uh, are awesome the day with Des Murray. Um, doing a photo shoot and it's just it's just how proud I, I want to look at those photographs and how proud I am of the nations uh, and you know, the talent that we've got there and this is just in barbering so I just wanted to that's a feel good factor for me when I look at that slide and I hope you feel the same as I do so we're looking at support moving on looking at the support that we have for you we have some webinar dates uh, for you to put in your diaries um, there on this slide. I'm not going to go through them, but there's a link there, and that will be your link to register for the webinars. Look at us, always look on our social media because we are also going to be adding more and more um, webinars as we go. We have one coming up with Caroline Arity, um later on. 
this month. So that'll be interesting. You'll probably have seen that actually um, out on social media now. The resources that we have for you, that we feel our resources are, you know, there. We fully support the hair and beauty industry with our textbooks, um, our EPA preparation tools. I know you don't do that in Wales, but in England we have a great preparation tool for um, for apprentices. Um, we have log books again for apprentices. We have resources, our enhanced smart screen um, is full of resources that will uh, help you in your delivery. And we have in England and just for the English apprenticeship, we have digital credentials. Um, that's something I want to talk about in a forum is how, how we could uh, build digital credentials into uh, into what we do within the forum. So that's there for your um, for your support and reference. Again, we are big on social media. Please, please, please follow us on Facebook and follow Emma and myself and Anne Harrod on LinkedIn. Uh, we put everything out on there. Also, the AHT there on on um, Facebook on Facebook as well. We post everything on there under the COVID because they reach a very very big uh, um, audience. So it's keeping everybody informed. And what I would suggest you do is um, when this webinar is completed, is make sure you um, you've emailed, you've updated your preferences on our website. And this is really important, and that's because of GDPR. We're not allowed to keep email addresses. It's about all about consent. So we say, please go in to the website. You'll find it right at the bottom of the page, uh, right at the bottom on the right hand side, and you'll see um, the Wall Garden um, Smart Screen Learning Assistant. And then you'll go to email updates. So if you go to email updates, it shall just check that you're not a robot, and then you're able to go in there and add what uh, information you require or, or need or want from City and Girls, um, whether it be uh, essential skills, um, the traineeships, uh, VRQs, our MVQs, you know, there's everything that you know, will just give you a wealth of information uh, and we can keep contact in contact with you um, through this. So this brings us to the end of um, the webinar. So we'll now um, say thank you very, very much. And you can see Anne Harrod's done this in Welsh. I'm very impressed. Um, I, I wish I could um, write an, an another letter. <laughs> <laughs> very impressed. I was just a bit scared she was going to do the whole of her, her bit in Welsh and we wouldn't know what she was talking about, but hey-ho. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we go through some of the questions now? Yeah, that would be super duper. So let's have a look. Okay, well, I think looking through the questions, we have answered most of them throughout the slide. So I'm guessing that people may have started to write questions before they'd listened to the slide, which is absolutely fine. Um, there's a couple of things, you know, questions around, are there still restrictions on some of the quals? You need to make sure that you are reading thoroughly the assessment mitigation guides alongside government recommendations. So the assessment mitigation guides will tell you exactly what is and what isn't permitted to do for each of the assessments, for each of the um, units within our qualifications. But also, they have to be used alongside government recommendations. They are not something that we have any control over. So you've got geographical um, restrictions, um, as well as on top of the other sort of uh, restrictions, close contact services, things like that. So please refer to those in your first instance. Um, somebody's asked, uh, given the unprecedented times, linked to, oh, no, I don't see the rest of the question, uh, linked to sort of the use of um, online portfolios, isn't it in sitting of interest to sort of subsidise online content? There are some updates coming your way. Sarah did email you all, I think it's the beginning of the week, Sarah, wasn't it, mm -hmm. around plans yeah from March 2021 moving forward so we are very much looking to move more so into the digital world one for more sustainable offer environmentally um, and two obviously because we're having to work more remotely uh, and virtually in these new times um, the actual use of paper-based logbooks and, and the resources is going to be more and more limited moving forward so yes watch this space Sarah will be in touch 
um, any consideration given at present to possible adaptions, adaptations for next year? Yes, I covered that. So as I explained, we are working day in, day out with the other professional associations and awarding organisations to put in place adaptations for the next academic year. We had a meeting yesterday with Habia, with um, steering groups, with um, professional associations such as the National Hair and Beauty Federation, alongside um, the other awarding organisations. So again, once everything's approved um, by Ofqual, who are our, our uh, regulator, um, and sort of qualification wales and everybody else that needs to be involved, we'll be able to tell you about those. As it stands today, business as usual, until we have external approval. We don't have the powers, unfortunately, just to uh, start changing assessment strategies or um, sort of apply mitigations willy-nilly. So we have to liaise with our regulators who are determined from the Department for Education. As soon as we know more, we will be in touch. Um, people are asking around rules of combination. Uh, we don't want to be in a similar position, those sorts of things. Obviously, all of that is taken into consideration. Um, due to the late, if people are talking about late availability of information, again, I can't stress enough, awards and organisations such as ourselves, oh, please excuse my dog barking, it's that time of day, um, are, have put in place all of these different things. Um, however, we have to wait for them to be fully approved. Okay, we're just going to look at anything else. Can we make claims by the 30th? Again, have you gone through the assessment mitigation guide? Um, somebody said that they have an EQA visit on the 7th of October. Again, the rules are derived from our regulators. They're not necessarily rules that city and guilds or other awarding organisations have put in place. Check the deadlines on your paperwork. If in doubt, drop Sarah and or Anne Harrod a message. Um, and they will be able to check that for you. But dates are not flexible. The dates that are set there on the uh, mitigation guides are the dates that we need to abide by. Uh, that's it, Sarah, from all the questions in the chat. Oh, I think, hang on, something else is just... Oh, great. Um, the, the question box is tiny, so we're trying to see as much as possible it's there. Uh, the question of subjects, um you know around easing expectations linking to quality assurance gosh that's a long one i'm not sure the actual question is more than a statement i think that one uh what happens is a course if part if a course is part-time the really be allowed to come, that comes from last week is there little no, very little time to mop up assessments unfortunately as we've said these are from our regulator the deadline these have been published since may 2020 so whilst they might have only been back for a week lots of customers have been contacting their learners over the summer period um, to get them to come in early come back early to complete apps on the assessment so um if there are particular circumstances for example someone has discussed they have a pregnant learner um again please liaise with sarah directly um they may be able to fill in is it like an extension uh, process Sarah, the learners who are on break in learning if they were pregnant, um, probably most people would yeah. want break in learning anyway, and okay. would pick up. Brilliant. What happens if learners don't complete by the thirtieth of September? Um, then you will be presumably transferring them onto another year of your program, and they will be um, transferring to the next cohort of learners. The rules are there as an extension. Um, rather than a given, you know, with, with flexibilities. And again, they are very tightly, uh, we are monitored from the regulators. Um, I'm able to um, currently do any work with learning observations for salons. I don't know why that might be. Maybe perhaps this particular person is talking about a geographical restriction or lockdown. What long-term adaptations are in place? They will be coming soon. Again, as soon as they've been approved externally by our regulators, we will be able to let you know what they were be um someone say hi frank <laughs> uh, again lots of people asking about adaptations for the next year too late once again not good enough as i said this isn't us it's one of those classic it's not us <laughs> isn't it it's uh we've got lots of recommendations in place but as you can and i'm sure appreciate um there are lots of people at the party that need to approve these um these adaptations and these flexibilities 
So watch this space. Things are being done for you as we speak. So if you need any other questions, I think we might be coming to the end of the questions I can see. Can you see anything extra? I can't see anything, camera actually. No, I can't see any more, Emma. I think that's all of them, Harriet, isn't it? Um, somebody else is asking, you have told us submit claims by the 30th. You always approve our claims on the 7th of October. How can we do them earlier? Um, I would speak to Anne Harrod, if Anne Harrod is your business manager. If you have not got direct claim status, then I presume there's a different process. Anne Harrod, is there? If you That's have fine. direct claims, you wouldn't be waiting for your EQA, would you? Uh, yeah, they would is be. That, is that correct? Yeah, it is. Yeah, I can pick these up with them individually tomorrow. Um, for the, I've got a list of all the questions. And what I'll do is I'll make sure I contact every single one of them tomorrow to have, to have a kind of a, an in-depth conversation about what's going on. I think that's probably the best way forward. That would be brilliant. And as I keep saying, yeah, I'll call Pat and Karen. Thank you, Mark. Uh, so I think, um, yeah, what we will do, as I say, every day we are working with all of the regulators um as i keep saying uh, as soon as we get anything approved and it's across all awards and organizations are in exactly the same situation um we will be in touch sarah won't we and and, and and harris as soon as we know you will know yeah definitely absolutely but we do appreciate you know these are incredibly difficult times um across the board, whether you're working in the industry, whether you're teaching, assessing, whether you're the learner, the apprentice, you know, it's incredibly frustrating, difficult times. Um, and we are all on the same journey together. So um, everything that we can possibly do has been done. We've put all of our recommendations forward, written all of our papers and those sorts of things. Unfortunately, there is a waiting game, Sarah, isn't there, for us to be able to implement such capabilities. I can't stress enough as well, if you do go onto our website to COVID-19, and there are links on the uh, on this PowerPoint, um, you will find um, adaption submission um, information there, which you will probably need. Um, they also have a fabulous little five-page uh, five document called, called the Quality Process Arrangements, and that was updated in July. So have a look at that, and it gives you some dates in there. Um, and, um, you know, there's a frequently asked, frequently asked questions um, document there, which is really, really handy. So have a, have a, look, have a look through those documents, you know, and, um, you know, please just bear, bear with us. You know, we are bearing with the uh, other, you know, awarding organisations, Ofqual, um, and everybody isn't us. We really are doing our best to make sure this is as painless as possible for everybody. Um, and and I, that's from from our heart. Is that right, Emma? Yep. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. We are fighting your corner every step of the way to be able to award um, and certificate these learners where um, achievement is due. Absolutely. And we've also got a document on there um, that Ofqual produced um, a guidance for heads of uh, centres and heads of department and teachers. Uh, so if that, there's some quite nice little um, things to read there, you know, that'll help you um, in your processes moving forward as well. So without a further ado again, um, I've said that three times, I think, um, it's gone past uh, 5.30. I'd like to bring the webinar to a close. I would like to thank um, Simone and, and Frank. Thank you very, very much. It was um, lovely to hear something different and something inspiring. And for David from the AHT, thank you so much for your time. It really is uh, going to be a pleasure to uh, work with you guys. I really am looking forward to taking this forward. And I do hope, um, you know, you, you join me on the journey. You know, all of you are listening to this webinar. I do hope you join us on the journey. And I'd like to say now have a lovely evening and um, I hope to see you very soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.